okay coming to the application of ceramic material so now from the last two slides you already know that you know based on the properties we can have um you know accordingly we can have the applications so for example ceramics can withstand high temperatures so high temperature applications uh, for making anything that needs to be used at high temperature either it, either it will be made completely of ceramic or it will have ceramic coating in 90% cases okay so even sometimes when uh, for example turbine blades they are made of metals but they often have a thin ceramic coating on top of them because ceramics are very good conductors of heat and they can um, you know they protect the metal inside from being overheated they also protect it from getting cracks and so on so ceramic coatings and in general ceramic materials are very useful in high temperature applications what are the other things uh, that are done at high temperature protective coatings so this is something the first one i already told you sometimes also you can have um, protective coatings on cookware so pressure cooker for example sometimes they you may have seen i don't know red and green the colorful pressure cookers they are not silver but nowadays you find the colorful ones and some other similar pots they have ceramic coatings on them okay so that is one application what else you can also use them in the lab you can use them as gas or liquid filters for ceramics especially then heat exchangers so heat exchangers so i don't know if you are aware of them but um, these are very commonly used in industry so heat exchangers boilers very other um, various other parts where you have high temperature things going on there we use ceramic materials or the parts made of ceramics okay and also by the way high temperature furnaces if you have a furnace um i don't know if i have written it somewhere but if you have a furnace which needs to go to 2000 degrees centigrade then the parts of that furnace itself where you are placing your sample those things should not melt right by themselves because if your furnace itself melts then you cannot heat anything uh, inside it for sure so in that case the sample holders in the tube and everything that is also made of ceramic typically alumina up to 1600 degree centigrade alumina and if you want to go even for higher temperature then more advanced ceramic materials are used okay fine so ha huh, insulators this is a picture um, of a nice bird I've, this is a himalayan magpie you will see a lot of them on um, iit mandi campus and the bird is sitting on top of an electric pole and the pole on top of the pole you see you may have seen these kind of these ring like structures plates on each on top of each other these are the ceramic insulators so ceramics are usually very good insulators of electricity and that is why sometimes uh, no actually often you have ceramic parts um, on the cables and on the electric poles so this is um, something you can also go and try to see or if there is a transformer nearby any uh, any electricity substation or something like that then you can see also sometimes for making separation between the cables so the cables don't hit each other or don't touch each, each other you know high voltage cables then you will have insulations made of ceramic materials okay so these are also some examples in semiconductor devices also sometimes you use them as electrical um, insulations you also use these materials as heat sink heat sink by the way means that if heat goes inside it then just the heat is distributed now why would i use something like that if i have some device and i don't want the device to overheat then i can put a panel of ceramic material so ceramic will sort of distribute the heat so that is the function of a heat sink so there also ceramic materials are used so all of these um, applications until now were related to high temperature but glasses i told you glasses can typically melt and they have a completely different set of applications although they are also ceramics it's a sub class of ceramic why because um, chemically they are also oxides so similarly um, similar to other uh, ceramic materials okay application of glasses i don't have to tell you mirrors and they are also in construction everywhere right and your camera lens is also made of glass and so on okay something called piezo electric material now you may have heard this term piezo electric materials are those uh, which um, which generate some charge and that is why a net flow of electron takes place when you apply mechanical pressure huh. so this is something these materials of course you can imagine if you are um, you know if you just keep uh, pressing something or let's say if you are running onto a treadmill and your treadmill has 
um, it can generate electricity. So then whatever electricity is coming out of it, you can maybe charge your phone at the same time, things like that. So they have some fancy applications here and there. Piezoelectric materials are also there, some ceramic materials that are that show piezoelectric properties. So one example I had given was barium titanate. And there may be some other examples as well. Okay, so these are more advanced applications. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so here I have written barium titanate also has these properties. Okay, what about biomedical applications? So I already told you that are bones and teeth. These are also ceramic. These are natural ceramic materials. So when we want to replace one tooth, then we also can replace it with a nice white ceramic porcelain tooth, right? So it doesn't have to be porcelain. I'm not sure if it is porcelain in fact, but this similar type, they are also ceramics. Different types of biocompatible ceramics. They also have biofilm, the films for protecting them and so on. These are all the medical devices or biomedical implants and so on. They are made with utmost care that they do not harm your body. But the primary materials in many implants is still, um, you know, ceramic. Okay. What else? Other industrial equipment and tools, you'll find a lot of little things that are made of ceramic, okay, bearings, um, nuclear, uh, if we talk about nuclear power plants or the construction at some point, uh, maybe actually I have one video on nuclear power plants um, already on YouTube. There you can see that the uh, nuclear fuel is actually embedded inside ceramic pellets and then it is fed inside the reactor. So these are some very, very advanced applications, definitely not for, uh, for this particular course. What else? Um, you know, the, you have seen the furniture. So you will say that furniture doesn't use ceramic. Well, it does. You've seen stone furniture, right? A lot of marble plates uh, on the tables and so on. So that's, that's ceramic, okay? And construction material, of course, glasses are there everywhere in construction also. Um, all these, uh, you know, bathroom fittings and, and so on, they are made of ceramic materials. So porcelain-like materials are all ceramics. All right. Okay. So last slide. How do we process ceramics? Now, if I ask you to make something using a metal, what are you going to do? You, The first thing that will come to your mind is melt it and then give it a shape and cool it down which works in most cases, right? You may have seen people making gold jewelry. What do they do? They melt it slightly, they give it a shape and it, then it hardens again and so on. But how do you do it for ceramics? They might not melt at all, definitely not at the temperatures that you can create. So in that case, the only good option of processing ceramics other than glasses is to make a fine powder of these ceramic materials. Even glasses can be converted into uh, fine powder and then processed. Mm. Okay, so now the first step in any um, ceramic processing is, uh, or at least the, the you know, other than glasses, the tools and all these things that you're making, is to make a good fine pow powder of it, which is not done manually. When you're working at a larger scale, then you also have machines for grinding. So you make really fine powder and uniform particle size as uniform as possible. Okay, so powder or paste is what is um, used as initial material in most of the ceramics. Okay, some of them may require drying, some may require firing. So clay pots, if you know how they are made, you know that you use a wet paste of the clay and then you give it a shape and then you uh, first you dry it a little bit and then you put it in the fire. So fire firing is also required in some um, some type of ceramic processing, but not in some cases. Okay, surface coating or patterning of the surface, if you want to do it, that's also an option because again, think of clay pots. If you want to make some patterns on the wet uh, clay, then you can do so. But these are these things are optional or surface coatings can also be provided sometimes. Okay, finally, when you give it a shape after that, you will perform, you will perform surface finishing. So maybe this will become more clear. Huh, okay, glasses and cements and ceramic powder. So huh, here I have the um, the overall the flow of uh, the process flow. Okay, the first thing is, so first step is your raw material, which you crush or which you grind. What is the second step? Now you mix the uh, ceramic material. It can be mixed with water or without water. So it can be, uh, you know, dry or wet mixing. The next step is what is known as 
forming. By the way, forming, so we have not started with the manufacturing processes yet. Forming processes, all forming processes are basically for giving shape to something, right? So forming something in manufacturing language means giving a shape, whatever shape we want to give. So that is our next step here, forming, okay? And then surface coating, as I said, these are optional. And then drying and firing if needed. And then finally, you give the surface finish. So basically, what you're doing is you start with a powder. So ceramic powder would look something like this. Okay. And then you ultimately lead to some shape or some product. Relatively simple shapes. Ceramics usually have relatively simple shapes. But nowadays, ceramics can also be 3D printed. And that is where you can give them more and more complex shapes. So here what I have written and what I did not talk about is that um, so these this, the steps that I have shown here, they are for um, these kind of ceramics like alumina or the white powder or the, if you take powder of stone where you have a relatively hard and brittle material which, which, is, uh, which can be converted into a fine dry powder and it does not require wet processing. Right, so not cements and also not clay-like products, but we are talking about mostly these refractory type of, uh, of ceramic materials where you have fine powder, but not much mixing with water going on. You can make compact structures using this powder itself. And then sometimes you can also use a glue and you can do 3D printing or you can just do heating or firing. And afterwards you can get these kind of shapes. Okay, glasses in most cases can be melted. So glasses, it's not that all glasses melt at low temperatures. The standard um, glass, the rather low quality glass that we buy, uh, lime glass, I think it's called, that melts around between 600 and 800. And a little bit of um, better quality glass, which is known as quartz, which has a higher impurity, uh, higher purity, sorry, that melts around. 1200 degrees centigrade and you can also have a little more advanced glasses that go that can go up to slightly higher temperatures but this is pretty much the limit but the point is that it's not about at what temperature do they melt they do melt and they can be processed after melting in fact you um, you will hear a lot about glass fibers or fiberglass now glass fibers can also be pulled when you melt the glass. If you've seen a glass blowing um, unit somewhere, then you will see that if you melt the glass, you can actually have thin fibers coming out of it. So glass can be processed after melting. What else do we have here? We have cement and concrete. So you know how cement and co concrete works. You mix it with water, give it a shape, and then afterwards it dries and hardens. And um, one option, as I said, that the more advanced option, which you will probably perform here when you come back to the Institute, is 3D printing of ceramic materials, where you have a very, very fine powder of ceramic. And you may or may not, but in most cases you will use a binder. Binder is like a glue-like material. So then you can make structures which have very complicated shapes. So that is all about the ceramic materials. Next time we will start with some other new type of material.